Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're back. Feels good to be back. Same old wall. Same old shelf. Same old cow. Same old Jimi Hendrix Electric Ladyland. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix Electric Ladyland? That... <laughs> <laughs> that could only mean one thing, that it's Classic Week, yeah! Yeah! Yes, this is a review of the Jimi Hendrix Experiences Electric Ladyland. Originally released in 1968 in the US, it spent two weeks at number one. Jimi's untimely death in 1970 also makes this the last official record he would release in his lifetime, and also the only Experience album where he has full production credits. Of course, this album also contains his transformative cover of Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower, a version of the track that is so popular it pretty much eclipses the original. This record also sports a peppy cover of Earl King's Come On, Let the Good Times Roll. But none of that is as important as the big and bold presentation that Jimmy, Noel Redding, and Mitch Mitchell went for on this record. As Electric Ladyland is a double album loaded with lengthy jams, wild solos, surreal effects, unorthodox mixes too, making the first two Hendrix experiences LP sound almost conventional by comparison. Not to mention all the great guest musicians on this LP too. For one, Steve Winwood's organ playing on Voodoo Child really helps make the track. Now, of course, Axis as well as Are You Experienced are both loaded with aggressive, hard, trippy blues rock, but Electric Ladyland shows the potential for the genre fusions when you pull out all the boundaries and try to craft a record that is uh, more of an experience than it is is just a mere collection of tracks. By that metric, Electric Ladyland is also one of the most formative and significant double albums in rock history, too. It beat The Wall, Physical Graffiti, as well as The Who's Tommy to the Punch, and aesthetically was more cohesive than the Beatles' White Album, which dropped the same year, as well as Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde. Electric Ladyland is also a tribute to its format, as this is a double album with four sides of vinyl, each of which has its own little vibe and sequence. The the first four tracks of this record, on side A, are some of the most acid-drenched. There's the slow and reversed tape intro on And the Gods Made Love, which is followed by the woozy and extravagant ballad Have You Ever Been to Electric Ladyland, a track that sounds like floating on your back down a red carpet that's unfurling from the center of a giant flower. Inside that flower are LSD sex bots calling you in slowly. <laughs> All the instrumentation on this track is so watery and phased out, which is then contrasted by the overwhelming and aggressive Crosstown Traffic, whose chaotic mix and powerhouse lead guitars and a weird panning I just can't get enough of. The track is as disorienting as the violent and sexual and outlandish traffic metaphors that Jimmy packs his lyrics with. But the cherry on top of side A is the 15-minute blues jam voodoo child that I mentioned earlier, which contains the kind of mesmerizing, eargasmic magic that can only be captured in a jam. The heavy blues rock passages on this thing are incredible. Mitch Mitchell's fills across the track are consistently explosive. The droney organ jam the band breaks into fluidly in Last Leg is amazing. In fact, I think this track says more about why Hendrix was great than the ocean of ink that has been spilled about his greatness over the decades. Because he was just a once-in-a-lifetime talent that was great not just just because of his uh, technical ability, yes, but also his melodic sensibilities, and most importantly, his ability to express himself through his instrument. I think Jimi Hendrix serves as a reminder that musicianship is not simply about uh, pulling off tricks or doing fancy shit, but learning to play something as if it's an extension of yourself, regardless of what that thing is. So, simply put, that's really what made Hendrix special, not just his life story and his song 
songwriting ability, his voice, but his almost spiritual connection to the guitar. In a nutshell, that's side A of this LP. Then there's side B, which is a bit punchier and loaded with some of the most straightforward and rockin' cuts on the entire record. There's Noel Redding's Little Miss Strange, which sure isn't technically a Hendrix-written song, but the track is packed with his very distinct guitar soloing and harmonies, which serve as a very colorful and versatile addition to the song. Then there's Long Hot Summer Night, which is one of the most swaggered and unique tracks on the project. It contains these wild and weird, brash opening licks, bright piano embellishments, as well as these eerie, phased-out vocal harmonies that sound like a, a couple of ghosts singing their way through the track. The song is groovy and tuneful, but simultaneously the performance feels like everything is just on the verge of collapsing, too. The Come On cover I mentioned earlier is given new life with a faster pace and a more aggressive performance style. This track is more proof of how much of a machine Hendrix was because his untamed riffs and soloing across the track is something to behold. He just does not stop. Meanwhile, Gypsy Eyes has some of the most out-of-control and chaotic guitar work on the entire record. It's also incredible how Hendrix was able to push boundaries of what conventional guitar playing was and, and come together with something that sounded so great, so visceral, so colorful, but also quite odd. Then Side B coasts out with the sparkly and enchanting burning of the midnight lamp, which features this mountainous finish of booming drums and angelic group vocals, psych guitars. It's just gargantuan. Then flowing into side C, we have pretty much a reset going on. There's the dueling sax and guitar leads of Rainy Day Dream Away. The spoken word and vocal lines on the track pretty much paint a picture of uh, getting high and relaxing while it's raining outside and I guess slowly falling into a dream state. The whole thing ends up being a chill and kind of funny setup for the following 1983, which is literally this lengthy blues psych prog jam about uh, be being a merman and, you know, like chilling in Atlantis and shit. The track also functions in multiple phases, too. The intro kicks off with these briny, reverb-drenched guitar leads. From that point, there's a fiery build and then a very quiet and contemplative middle passage, which is more about, I guess, the exploration of this open space than it is about any kind of clear and concise composition going on. Then there's the cinematic and explosive final leg loaded with badass solos and Jimmy singing once again about being in Atlantis. Moon Turn the Tides right after this track is pretty much a one minute noise interlude to uh, calm things down and Side C essentially becomes like this little three track dream sequence on the LP. Following this, Side D is like a big fat bow that kind of ties the whole record up. You have callbacks at this point on the LP, like on the song Still Raining, Still Dreaming, which brings back the same groovy and bluesy musical motifs of Rainy Day Dream Away, but now Jimmy and company are jamming on these riffs and jamming on these licks even harder, even more aggressively. Jimmy's guitars are turned up to a deafening volume on this song, especially when he's hitting uh, some of those high-pitched uh, chords and harmonies. Like, it gets very shrill. This side also closes with a reprise of Voodoo Child, so you have those same kind of licks and motifs riffed on once again, but uh, more aggressively, more volume guitars are just ear blasting. Side D also contains a fresh original House Burning Down, which is packed with more thunderous drums and guitars. It's really just proof that Jimmy and Mitch and Noel wanted to go out with a bang on this side of the record. Really max out Electric Lady Land's final moments. But there's also something kind of shadowy and surreal about the way the rhythm section on this track kind of veers in and out of view. Even sober, I feel like I'm listening to this track high. Then, of course, at the start of this review, I mentioned the cover on this record of All Along the Watchtower. That also pops up inside D. And it's such a masterful version of the song, from Jimmy's vocals to the rhythm section to how epic his guitar sounds on this track, how he ornately paints melodies around this Bob Dylan song. It's really just incredible, even for me being like a hardcore Dylan fan who uh, maybe at one point, because I've heard it so many times, uh, might have like, you know, uh, poo-pooed uh, the Hendrix version, because again, you know, so overplayed, so over-acknowledged sometimes, because with it being like the Hendrix experience's biggest 
single, uh, sometimes it does kind of overshadow some of Jimmy's great originals. But years on, I do have to acknowledge, like it is an amazing cover and Jimmy really transforms it into his own song, which I think is about the best thing anyone can do with a cover. That's pretty much side D of Electric Ladyland and that's the record as a whole. Incredible record, classic record, amazing record. Once again, one of the most significant double albums and rock albums of all time. Totally unfiltered and uninhibited proof of Jimmy's artistic greatness. And if you're a fan of this record, I urge you to put it on and rock with it one more time. And if you are unfamiliar with this album, Jesus Christ, you know, what, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, L listen to it. It's a classic. It's amazing. All right, I think I can uh, leave it at that. You're the best. Anthony Fantano, Jimi Hendrix, Tran. Zition, have you given this classic album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Don't rate it, it's just a classic. It's just a classic. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Electric Lady Land, forever.